What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So Samsung brought a handful of new features to the S9 this year, of course, and one of the more interesting changes has to do with the optical sensor on the back of the device. The sensor's primary function is a health indicator of sorts. It allows you to monitor your heart rate, which is nothing new. Samsung phones have been able to do that for a while, but what no phone has been able to do up to this point is monitor a person's blood pressure. And coupled with a new research app in the Google Play Store, that's pretty much what you can do now with the S9. The app is called My BP Lab, and Samsung partnered with the University of California, San Francisco to make this all possible, but also to allow the university to conduct research on the topic of smartphones being used as these sort of medical devices, and how they might be able to improve accuracy for the future. So when you download the app and first set everything up, you're going to have to go through a bunch of screens that you know all the details about the study, what you can expect from the app, and also you need to enter some personal information about yourself. Although I didn't find it particularly invasive, which is a good thing. After you have the app all set up, you need to set a baseline heart rate reading, and you can do this a couple of different ways. The most accurate way, obviously, is to use the proper medical devices, like an armband or a cuff or a machine. Or, if you happen to know maybe your heart rate reading from the last doctor's visit you had, you can also just manually enter it in, which is what I did. You want to be as accurate as possible, of course, and I'll show you why that's important in just a second. Now, in order to actually take your blood pressure, it's really straightforward. You just need to sit comfortably in a chair with your arm up above your heart, and then just cover the sensor around back with your finger. You just have to lay it down across the sensor, just make sure it's completely covering it, and the app will tell you if you've done it properly. And after only a few seconds, it'll capture your current blood pressure reading. It's surprisingly quick, and depending on how you initially set up the app, you'll get your reading in one of two ways. If you were able to set up a true initial blood pressure reading, like 120 over 80, you'll be able to get the actual numbers reading from the app. If not, after the second time you take your blood pressure, you'll get a percentage change reading compared to your last measurement, which isn't as helpful as a numbers reading, but it still might be relatively useful for some people, I'd imagine. The app encourages you to take your blood pressure twice a day, every day, and you'll be able to map how things are going over time. But more importantly, a person could potentially check their blood pressure in an instant in order to monitor any drastic changes. And I think that's how this app would be most useful. I can't necessarily comment on its accuracy, unfortunately, aside from the fact that the blood pressure reading it measured for me was within a couple percentage points of what I know to be my approximate blood pressure, so it wasn't giving me anything crazy. And I think for most people, it'll be a solid tool for casually monitoring their health. I do hope UCF gathers enough data in their study to really nail down the accuracy of something like this. And especially seeing how useful the Apple Watch is in monitoring health, I'd imagine we'll see everyday tech items be incorporated more and more into the realm of health monitoring. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick video. Let me know what you think of this stuff in the comments below, if you found it useful or interesting. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.